All right, it's finally time to start talking about Kick, the brand new streaming platform that has everyone's attention because streamers get 95% of the sub split and it's getting a lot of attention. A lot of streamers are moving, even some really big names that are kind of unexpected. So in this video, I wanna break down what I think you should think about if you are considering moving to Kick. okay? I'm gonna give you some backstory about the platform, maybe some things you didn't know, maybe some things you're not even really considering. I'm gonna go through everything in this video to hopefully help give you a well-rounded perspective on where Kick currently stands. Should you think about moving? Should you wait? Let's jump into it. Now, we really can't talk about Kick until we talk about the amount of controversy that surrounds the platform currently. And you might be wondering, why do I care about this? If it doesn't affect me, let me make my own decision. Well, consider that a site's bad reputation will deter advertisers, other streamers, viewers, sponsors. It really affects everything that you do, right? You don't wanna associate your brand with a brand that has a really bad reputation. So it's important to look at the type of public sentiment that Kick has and what kind of headlines it's making. Kick is founded by the same owners of Stake.com, which is a crypto gambling site that was banned by Twitch back in October 2022. Streamers like Trainwreck and the top slot streamers were playing Stake.com on Twitch, and after they were no longer allowed to, they needed somewhere else to go. So what better company to get involved in the streaming landscape than Stake, right? They have the most at stake when gambling got banned, so they decided to start a platform called Kick. So if you had a problem with gambling on Twitch, you're probably not going to want to stream on Kick because there's a lot of gambling on the site. Kick's appeal has extended beyond just gambling streamers. Banned Twitch streamers like Aiden Ross have flocked over to Kick as an alternative. Aiden Ross is not a good person by any means, is known for hate speech and saying really awful things. In fact, Aiden Ross's recent transphobic tirade has brought out criticism from Kick co-owner Trainwreck, yet no official punishment has been handed down. The platform has also seen instances of sexually explicit content, streaming copyrighted material like movies and the Super Bowl, and other really concerning activities. These are the type of headlines that Kick is currently making. And so every streamer should really pay attention to how Kick lands in the news and how that could affect their own brand if they choose a stream on the site. This type of environment is just not suitable for many creators, especially marginalized streamers, trying to go on a platform where their poster boy is making transphobic comments without any sort of punishment whatsoever. So it seems like there's a severe lack of moderation on the platform right now. Definitely worth considering if you value safety, if you're concerned about trolls, um, you know, that's something that likely is prevalent at this time. Not to mention, if Kick doesn't do anything about moderating their site, allowing sexually explicit content, or even copyrighted materials on their site, they could attract the attention of government regulators, and that would wind up having some serious repercussions. I think when you're going to switch platforms and you're considering all the options, you wanna make sure that the platform is in a stable place, that it's probably making money, it's probably doing well. I mean, you know, we've seen this happen in the past with platforms failing, we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute, but you know, you really want that longevity. So having Kick have concerns with potentially legal issues is just not a factor you really wanna think about. Like I mentioned, if you're thinking about switching to a platform, you're kind of hoping it's making money because otherwise they might shut it down. With all the recent headlines that Kick has been making, advertisers and brands are likely to shy away from association with a platform known for unfiltered hate speech. That directly affects your ability to gain sponsorships, but it also affects Kick's ability to become sustainable. You will wonder how these splits are possible. Twitch has led people to believe that subscriptions are a big revenue driver for their company. That's why they tell creators they can't give them a 70-30 split. But subscriptions are a tiny amount of revenue for live streaming websites. What drives revenue is ads. Kick will partner with the world's leading advertisers to generate cash flow. I believe that creating the best incentives for creators will lead the best creators to Kick, and the best creators will bring the best advertisers. 
train wreck on Kick's monetization strategy. Okay, that may or may not have been train wreck. I can't confirm, but it was in his tweet longer. He did write that. So train wreck claims that Kick's path to profitability is through advertising, which is why they can offer a 95% subscription split to creators. If they can't convince advertisers to spend money on a platform riddled with moderation issues, then that model's not going to work. And that's a big concern for creators. I mean, heck, even YouTube has problems with figuring out what works for advertisers and creators, and they've been around forever. Now, we obviously can't talk about Kick without talking about Mixer and the story of what happened there. Mixer was acquired by Microsoft and then later shut down in 2020. Now, they went for the strategy of trying to acquire big names like Ninja and Shroud, and they spent a ton of money to get this done. But the problem with this is that it wasn't enough to compel the viewers to go to the site. They got plenty of people streaming. There was no shortage of streamers on the site. And there was honestly really some quality creators streaming over there that devoted their heart and soul to trying to make Mixer work. I mean, they were their number one supporters. They were trying to get people over there, but it just wasn't enough. The viewers did not want to leave Twitch. And as much as your viewers are going to tell you, I'll follow you anywhere, I'll watch whatever you play, it is not always true, unfortunately. Most of the time, when creators switch to a new platform, they lose a lot of their viewers, so much so that Mixer couldn't survive. Without a lucrative pool of viewers that are actively browsing the site, wanting to find new streamers to watch, no streaming platform can succeed. Even with a 95-5 split, that doesn't do anything for the viewers to come on over. So if Kick is going to succeed, they not only have to compel streamers, which it does seem like they're doing, and they are spending money on streamers, but they also have to figure out how they're going to entice viewers. Relying on creator loyalty is just not enough. It's not a working strategy. Mixer proved that by spending millions and millions of dollars trying to go that route and they shutter their doors. What's really unfortunate about the Mixer situation is the streamers that did take that risk, that went for a new platform, that felt they were gonna be secure in a site that was backed by Microsoft, they were completely burned by the situation. I mean, they were not given a heads up about what was happening, and they were left to scramble to try to find where they were going to next, trying to communicate with their community, trying to let them know where they're gonna go. And honestly, some streamers never recovered from that failure that that platform had. So if you're considering going to kick, really weigh these risks carefully. You know, being part of the, the ground floor is a really exciting thing. But if you have an existing community elsewhere, I would not advise to put your eggs in one basket and go to a site that has a lot of uncertainty around it in terms of their direction, their moderation issues. They're going to have a lot of growing pains as they figure out, are they going to be a legitimate platform or is this just a place for gambling streamers to exist? These are a lot of questions that are still in the air. So all I'm saying is just be careful. Okay, so let's talk about the 95-5 subscriber split that's getting everyone's attention. And let's do a little napkin math, okay? So essentially what that means is for you to break even on Kick, you're going to need to get half of your current Twitch subscribers to subscribe on Kick. Now, some of your viewers may honestly be uncomfortable with subscribing or giving their payment details through a site that they're you know, not sure about. It's got a background in the crypto gambling world and that could cause some real concerns for your viewers. So, you know, I would talk to them and kind of gauge the sentiment before you, you know, make this jump and see, can you realistically get half of your current subscribers to go on kick? Now, keep in mind that when you switch platforms, like I mentioned, you should expect to see less viewers than what you have on your current platform because it's a new site, people aren't used to it, and there's always just that natural drop off when you leave where you're rooted and go somewhere new. You know, people don't get the messaging, they might forget to hit the follow button, they have to create an account. There's a lot of hurdles that a viewer needs to get over. Plus, with the bad reputation, with the crypto background, 
you know, some of your viewers may not even just want to touch that site. So those are other considerations that you have to make. So you're getting less viewers and that's going to equate to less subscribers. Can you get half? And that's just to break even is what we're talking about, right? Like this is all just to have the same amount of revenue that you have on Twitch. That's the thing about Twitch. People are used to the site. They're comfortable giving their payment information. They're used to that process. You're going to have to teach your users a new process on a new site with an unknown reputation. There's a lot of question mark factors here. I think one interesting case study that we're seeing early on is Kick made a major signing with GM Hikaru, who mostly streams on Twitch. He's a Twitch partner. He's known for playing chess at an extremely high level, right? And he recently signed last week to stream primarily on Kick. Now, it's still very early, but, you know, a week out, we've seen that Hikaru is getting about 25% of what his Twitch viewership is. So, you know, he got 3,000 viewers on Kick and he averages over 12K usually on Twitch. Um, this is very interesting. We're going to continue to follow this. Is Hikaru going to be able to bring more and more people over or is it going to fade away as viewers get overusing kick they go back to their routine of using twitch there's just not enough options to really make kick their new routine a lot of big question marks but even hikaru is you know not able to get the same amount of viewership by a large margin so if hikaru is getting 25 percent of his viewership what's 25 percent of your viewership is that sustainable all right, so let's get to the breakdown for streamers and the things that they should consider before switching to a platform. So the first thing is going to be the backers, right? Who owns a site? Who are the stakeholders? Um, sorry about the pun. This will help you understand the motivations and the potential stability of a site. So for Kick, we talked about this. They're owned by the same people who run a gambling site. They have plenty of upstart capital but they may be more focused on gambling related schemes and strategies. Stake may be a primary advertiser on the platform. So if you're a family friendly streamer or, you know, you don't want to expose your audience to gambling, then kicks probably going to be a non-starter revenue model. How does the site make money? How do streamers make money? Obviously this is something you want to consider, right? Because you want to figure out if there's a path to, financial stability for yourself. And this is the same goes for kick because we saw with mixer that they ended up shutting the doors because they couldn't be profitable. And that's what every company's ultimate goal is, right? So on the kick side, train wreck insists that advertising is going to be their primary model We're, we'll see if uh, that's going to be the case, considering they're having issues with their image and that's going to scare off the advertisers. So this could take a while for them to implement a system, be able to pitch advertisers and get something going. But again, they do have that upstart capital. So I don't foresee kick going anywhere, you know, at least within the next year. But again, it's hard to say where their direction is going to be headed. Now for streamers, a 95-5 split is the best subscriber split in the entire industry. And that is the only form of monetization. So they don't have something like bits, though. Trainwreck did mention that that is coming. And so that's something to consider, you know, for your financial model. Traffic. If you want to get discovered and grow as a streamer, they're going to have to be viewers exploring the site and looking for new streamers to watch. As a new site, Kick is minuscule in size. Most of the viewers there right now are there to see their one favorite streamer who moved over and they're probably going back to watching on Twitch. For streamers to succeed on Kick, the company is going to have to spend a lot of money on advertising. And like I mentioned before, they're going to have to get creative and figure out how they can compel viewers, a broad viewer base to come to the platform and make Kick their new streaming routine. User experience. New streaming sites struggle to grow because they can't compel viewers to watch the platform. People like what they're used to. Now, the good news for Kick is their site is eerily familiar, right? If you watch on Twitch, this makes it easier for streamers and viewers to become acquainted with the platform and may actually increase retention where Mixer struggled with that because they were quite different from the normal Twitch experience. Moderation. What are the site's terms of service and community guidelines? What moderation tools are available? 
Safety is a critical consideration for both streamers and viewers alike. It affects everyone's experience and a lack of safety will drive people away from the site. We've covered this thoroughly already, but moderation and safety seem to be low on Kick's priority list. All right, so let's say that you've decided to stream on Kick or you're on the verge of making that decision. What are some things that you should actually do before you move to Kick? Here's a couple ideas. Now, if you're a small streamer, then some of these ideas may not really relate to you if you don't have an existing following. Consider multi-streaming to several platforms at the same time. You've got nothing to lose by doing that and it maximizes your growth opportunities and discoverability. Try multi-streaming to Twitch, YouTube, and Kick all at once. That's probably the best route to go if you're a small streamer. Talk to your community first. It's important to have a conversation with your community so you can get a pulse on what streaming on Kick would actually look like. Are your viewers receptive to the idea? Would your subscribers move their payment over to a new site? You're not just a streamer, you're community leader too. So you have to see what your crowd thinks about Kick. Ask them, talk to them, have an open conversation before you make this decision without them. Leverage your existing audience. Whenever you start building on a new social site, you should go where your audience currently is and leverage them to grow your following on the new site. Start by creating a Kick account and ask your viewers to do the same. Have them hit the follow button on your new site. If you struggle to get traction with free follows, getting active viewers, chatters, and paying subscribers is going to be a lot more challenging. This is a great way to gauge initial sentiment beyond just that discussion that you have, right? Because it's one thing for viewers to say that they'll watch you anywhere, right? And it's another thing for them to actually walk the walk. So see if your community will actually make an account over and kick and follow you over there. Another baby step that I would recommend before jumping all into a new platform is do a little experimentation before you make a complete decision. You know, trade one of your Twitch stream slots with a kick stream slot, right? So if you stream on Fridays at 3 p.m. on Twitch, try changing that to streaming on Kick. See if your audience will go over there. That way you're not making a full decision and jumping all in and then maybe regretting it and losing some of your precious traction that you spent years building up. So my final thoughts on Kick as it stands right now, if Kick wants to succeed as a legitimate Twitch competitor and not just an outlet for displaced gambling streamers, they ultimately will be forced to reconcile with the lack of moderation, the mountain of red flags that the site currently possesses. Streamers considering streaming on Kick should continue to monitor the platform's actions or inactions closely, gauge public sentiment, and look to see if brands are responding to the platform or not. I think right now the site is super, super early, and I think streamers can get that initial gold rush feeling, especially as they see all of these streamers getting gifted hundreds of subs and, you know, they're seeing all these payouts. And you have to remember that those are going to be not the rule, but kind of the special cases because those people have an existing audience that they are leveraging and they're getting gifted subs by maybe community members, but also people like Trainwreck and people who run Kick. So you know, you're going to need to have viewers first. That always comes first, right? Before you can get any sort of subscriber count, 95% of zero subscribers is still zero dollars. So start with the basics and really strategize your decisions before you just start seeing the dollar signs and making the decision that could damage your entire career. So keep a close eye on things. And that's what I'll be doing here. So make sure you hit the follow button, uh, you know, give it a like, give it a subscribe. Um, and I'll be keeping a close eye on things and we'll see how Kick continues to develop. Thanks for watching. And let me know what you think about this. Are there any things that I missed? What are, is your decision if you're a streamer out there or even a viewer? Do you want to watch on Kick or are you avoiding it? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.